they must give an account. Uh, they are looking over your souls. And the Bible says, and this is one of the scariest verses in the whole Bible to me as a pastor. Uh, they must give an account of how they did. Right? They got to answer to God. Right? I have to answer to God by... And he's going to ask me, what kind of pastor were you? And I can't make anything up because he knows. Well, the scripture says, look, uh, there are men who must give account. Notice this. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. And then it says, look, for that would be of no advantage to you. Now, God is not going to be able to work in your life if you make it a burden for those in leadership over you. Now, notice this. The scripture says we should follow leaders. The seventh hard attitude is this. Will I give and receive spiritual correction? And I think six and seven kind of go hand in hand. Will I give and receive spiritual correction? Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people in the church who are willing to give spiritual correction. All you have to do is hang out in a church uh, a couple weeks and you'll find that out really quick. Okay? But the question needs to, to, to be asked is this. Are we willing to receive it too? If we're going to give spiritual correction, we have to ask ourselves the question, am I really willing to receive it? Now, look up here for a second because I just want to be flat honest with you for a minute. Everyone looking at me. One of my biggest heartbreaks as a pastor one of my biggest discouragements as a pastor is to see God's children be ugly towards one another. I, I, I think that breaks not only my heart, but I think it breaks God's heart as well. Uh, it reminds me of the two kids that were fighting in the backyard. Right? Two kids, they're fighting in the backyard, they're just going at it, and the mom sees them, and she yells out the window, you kids, knock it off. And the kids yell back, it's okay, mom, we're just playing church. <laughs> right. uh, gossip kills a church, talking about one another behind their back, kills a church, spreading half-truths, will hurt a church and kill it in some cases. Being mean and hateful with our words and our actions can really kill a church. Uh, are we willing to give and receive correction? That's where that whole grace thing comes along. Sure, you, you might find somebody in the church who's not like you. Well, thank God that God loves them too, as much as he loves you. And, and thank God that he gives us grace when we blow it. And so we've got to learn to offer that too. In an attitude of humility. Are we willing to do this? Now let me just ask the question. And I just want you to think in your head. Whether or not you're willing to hurt. Uh, to help in this area. By not only giving spiritual correction. But by willing, being willing to receive it. Right? Um, the church is about the matter of the heart. Now notice this. In Hebrews 3.13. It says, but encourage one another. How, how often, guys? Look at it. What it says. Day after day. day after day. Encourage each other, one another, day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Did you know that it's possible to think that you're doing the Lord's work when you get on somebody that you really should have, shouldn't be getting on at all? That you should just be offering a little bit more grace? Understanding who they are or what's going on in their world. It says, today, as long as it's still called today, we should encourage one another so that none of us will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Now, let me just have you look at your outline. Look at your outline, everybody. Just look at it. I just want to ask the question, which one of these do you need to work on? And I want to go over them. And I just want you to put a star by the one that you need to work on the most. Okay? Maybe some of you are thinking, i got a few of these. I just want you to work on one this week. And so the one that you need to work on the most, look at, look at what it says. Will I look to the interest of others? 
Will I live an honest and open life? Will I clear up relationships? If I need to do that, will I do that? Uh, will I participate in the work of the church? Will I support the church financially? Will I follow the spiritual leadership in the church? And will I give and receive spiritual correction? Uh, I know which one I need to work on. You probably do too after we went through this. But let me just close with saying a couple more things. Look up here for a second. God wants this church to grow. Right? As, as we start moving through the summer, as we start seeing God bring new people and guests into our congregation, reach out to them, love them, welcome them. God wants to bring as many people as he can into his family. And you know what, guys? Let me just give you a statistic. There's 1.7, 1.8 million people living within 10 miles of our church. And a lot of them don't go to church. And so this summer, as we're thinking about it and praying for our family members and those people that we love, um, let's do our best to reach out to them, invite them to church, invite them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Why? Because God loves them so much. Uh, more than you and I, and, and, and that's pretty big. Uh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to forgive me for my sins, first of all as the pastor of this church. I pray that you would help me to become the man of God you want me to be. Uh, the husband you want me to be. The spiritual leader you want me to be, God. And Lord, forgive me when I fail you, like I often do. And Lord, I just pray for this church, and I pray for everybody sitting here today, Lord, that we get real with ourselves, and we look at our heart, and we look at these questions, and we say, God, this is an area I struggle with. Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me to follow you more. God, I pray that this place would be a place where people are welcome. That you would send people to us that need you. And not only that, God, help us to go out and, and reach people for you. Lord. Help us to love people the way you love them. And help us to love you more. If you're here this morning and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, God loves you so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross so that you can go to heaven. But to get there, you have to invite him into your life. You have to ask him to forgive you your sins. So I just want to lead you in a prayer. If you want to give your life to Christ today, to Jesus, just pray a simple prayer like this. Lord, come into my life. Forgive me for everything I've done wrong. Help me to start living for you today. To put you as the priority and not myself. And Lord, help me to get connected to a church where I can have all these attitudes flowing out of me. That I would serve you, follow you. God, I just pray that you would help me to do that. So as best I know how I give my life to you today. For the rest of us, you might want to say something like this. Dear Lord, help me to put other people's needs ahead of my own. Lord, help me to be real and open and honest. And Lord, help me to clear up some relationships I might be broken. And Lord, help me to participate in the church. Help me to get involved. And God, help me not to hold on to my wallet so tight that I don't worship you with the things you've given me. And Lord, help me to follow the leadership in our church. And God, help me not only give you correction, but to receive it as well, especially from you. Lord God, I thank you so much for everybody who's here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join us as we move forward.